Hello, and welcome to the Mobile UX Marathon, a series of weekly webinars by Google on how to improve user experience and conversion rates on the mobile web. Today, we're going to discuss A-B testing, and specifically, we will look into examples on how you can do A-B testing with Google Optimize. My name is Anna. You know me. I'm based in Dublin today. And we have also two amazing speakers joining us today from London and Stockholm. So while we are starting the introduction, say hi in the chat. Say where are you based in at the moment, so from which location you're joining our fifth live stream of the marathon. And also, since today we're going to talk about A-B testing, please tell us what is your favorite A-B testing tool. And we do hope that you're going to say Google Optimize. So I'm just going to go now to introduce our speakers. We have Maya Bilic and Lena Hansen. So Maya, hello, Maya in London. Hi, everyone. My name is Maya. I'm based in London, in our Google office in London. I am senior solution consultant on Google Marketing Platform, specialized in Optimize and Optimize 360. So that means that I help our clients use the best, uh, take the best out of Optimize tool and help them with A-B testing. Great. Thank you, Maya. Uh, and also today we have with us Lena Hansen, again, joining from Stockholm. So hello, Lena, and even we've seen you already before. Say hi to the audience. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so we are going to cover today A-B testing and Google Optimize, and the agenda looks like this. I'm going to quickly walk you through the Mobile UX Marathon, uh, some program rules and the feedback from the last time. Thank you so much for filling out feedback forms. And also, as promised, we will do a live UX audit. Uh, thanks so much for everyone who submitted the, your top URLs to us. We've selected one of them. And yeah, Maya will do the recap of all the pre-work videos devoted to A-B testing and Google Optimize that you hopefully watched before the live stream. And then we will do the live demo of Google Optimize tool and discuss different case studies. So now, um, yeah, welcome back to the Mobile X Marathon. Today it's the fifth live stream. The last one is going to be happening next Tuesday on how to improve UX with progressive web technologies. Do watch the pre work videos and dial in. And please provide feedback to us on every single topic, every single live stream. May I remind you that we will be rewarding people who are giving us feedback regularly. So now it's your chance to go <laughs> to the Mobile UX Marathon website to watch all the live streams that you haven't watched before, all the pre-work videos, and provide us feedback to fill out feedback forms. Uh, yes, so the, the next one, some, some of the feedback that you provided us uh, from the last time, basically really, really great uh, session as, as we felt. Um, so great content, people love the case study of Shu. And uh, yeah, so one of the um, ideas was if we can have more tutorials on how you can use your tools. And we're delighted to tell you that today we included the Google Optimize uh, live demo into the live stream. Volume down, yeah, we had a bit of the issues in the live stream studio here in Dublin. So that's why today I actually changed the speaker type and I'm joining from my laptop. Anyway, moving on to the next thing. Yeah, oh yeah, and just once again, please fill out all the feedback forms for all live streams. Again, uh, we are very keen to, to hear what you're saying. So live UX audit, thanks so much to everyone who submitted their um, top, like the to landing page URLs. We did select uh, one of the examples. It is also a retail. And we know people have been complaining that we talk a lot about retail. However, we thought it's a really good example. It's a company from Africa. And uh, it's uh, a retail website uh, where from Kenya where people can uh, buy uh, different uh, prescriptions and medicine. So all this kind of things. And uh, so first of all, before giving some recommendations on what to test there, I actually wanted to uh, speak about what 
is really well done on, on this website. And uh, I can say that really great to see the search bar exposed, uh, that um, also you, there is a, some sort of a small copy inside of the search bar, like you um, tell users what they can actually search for that looks very, very intuitive, very visual as well. Uh, also, high-level navigation options just below the banner. They are above the fold. I'm super clear as the user that the, of, about all the options that are available for me on the website. I can upload the prescription. I can shop. I can do many things. So that I think this is very, really, really great. Uh, also, in, in general, in terms of the visual design, great color palette. You are designing from white, as we call it in the Google material design language. Uh, so, and you are using only three colors in general, right? So it's white, it's pink, and it's green. So not more than three colors. This is kind of one of the uh, basic uh, rules uh, of, of nice visual design. Um, and yeah, display and value proposition on the home page. It's a bit below the fold, but it's still there. And it's very nice and visual. You're using a combination of text and visuals, so different icons. And I really also like that you did include the value proposition of both of the uh, who you are as a company, what is the convenience of this specific website for the user, and also how the process looks like, right? So how would people order from your website, how they're going to receive the products, and so on. And yeah, and the floating action button with the uh, chat support, uh, it's really nice when I click on that. It's, uh, it's a mobile first chat, and I really liked the UX of it. Moving on to the things that you, you could maybe test. So first of all, and you, now you can see this is an animation. Uh, there is an animated carousel on the home page. So do definitely test turning off this animation. It kind of attracts a lot of attention, uh, a lot of visual attention from the user. I have. Um, uh, a bit of the hard time to so read what's on the banners because they move pretty fast. So maybe just turn off the animation and try to put user in control, allow them to explore this carousel of banners themselves. So you can implement either dots or small arrows so they can click through or swipe through the carousel. Also, yeah, you can consider increasing the font and the touch target. Sometimes it's a bit hard to read and hard maybe even to tap uh, on some, some of the icons or some of the high level navigation categories. Um, also, you, yeah, I, as I said, really, really well done that you are super clear about the value proposition of you as a store. Maybe you can consider testing, just displaying this a little bit above the fold, right? You can play around with different layouts, uh, how you can move these things above the fold, and also a combination of text and an icon uh, look it works really well. Uh, so you can maybe consider shortening the key bullet points about your website, about your service, and try displaying them uh, above the test, displaying them above the fold. On the high-level categories, on the high-level navigation call to actions, right? So uh, either shop now or uh, like upload the pre prescription, you can maybe display the icons as well. Again, as we say, the combination of text and visuals gives you clarity. Um, and uh, yeah, so on the top uh, where, where you have the pink panel, the icons are not really aligned in terms of design. Uh, sometimes you use just the icons, sometimes you use just text, sometimes you, you use both, for example, for the phone number. So just make sure you um, use the consistent design so users don't spend time on thinking about where the button starts, where it ends, and what it does. Um, and yeah, so sometimes maybe, yeah, it, in, in few areas of the landing page, it's a bit busy visually. So maybe you can play around with, again, with the visual design and uh, maybe not implement all buttons in a full color. Maybe you can try the ghost button design. Uh, and that's how you can maybe attract the attention to the really key CTAs, what you want. OK, so now. Moving on to the recap of the homework videos. And I'm going to start with 
um, giving you an introduction, a recap of the introduction to A-B testing by Mete. It was unfortunately Mete couldn't join us today. But yeah, so basically in his video, and if you haven't had a chance to watch that video, do go to the MobileX Marathon website and watch that. He says that testing is really the only way how you can be absolutely sure that specific change has a positive impact on your KPIs. Um, so you do have to test everything and that's how you know it really works for your user, for your target audience or for your business model. Also, he takes you through a really nice way how you can work on building up your hypothesis and he's using the frame, framework if then do. Um, and yeah, the last but not least, and this is something that is uh, true for testing on absolutely any tool. So A-B testing should be a constant cycle within your company. That's how you should be constantly checking absolutely all hypotheses that you have. And in theory, like you should kind of move in your website, um, website optimization process from revolution to evolution, where in the revolutionary model, you're launching some website redesigns every like three, five years, and you obviously spend a lot of time and resources on that. But when you have the evolutionary model where you do small tweaks and constant optimization of your website, that's how you are moving slowly and you're always keeping up on the top of the industry um, leaders. So uh, on this note, I'm giving, I'm giving the floor to Maya, and she's going to give the uh, recap of the homework videos that she has recorded and then take you through the content of this live stream. Hello, Maya. Thank you, Anna. Um, I think you left me just on the right note. Uh, I really like the concept of going from revolution to evolution. Um, and I know that it's not always easy to start with A-B testing. Um, so that's where Google Optimize comes in. Um, Opti Google Optimize is super easy to use, but also very powerful. Um, and it can get you started in as short as five minutes, as I will demonstrate you um, uh, a bit later on. So uh, if you haven't seen the pre-recorded videos, I would highly encourage you to do so. Um, they will take you through the basic concepts of A-B testing uh, in Optimize, how to get started, what is the methodology that we use, and how to do personalization. One of the key uh, things when speaking about Google Optimize uh, versus the other experimentation tools is the Google Analytics integration. So they're integrated natively, meaning that it's uh, just two clicks away to get your data flowing in from analytics to optimize and from optimize to analytics, meaning that you will eliminate the majority of discrepancies happening with the third party tools. And of course, uh, the most important thing, what will you learn from your testing? Uh, Google Optimize offers intuitive reporting that will not only tell you which of the variants is performing better, but by how much, and if you deployed the winning variant at this very moment, what would your future conversion rate look like? So with that being said, um, let's move on, and I will show you very quickly um, how Google Optimize UI works, looks like, and how can we set up a very simple test in a very short time. So, um, at this point, you should be able to see my screen, and this is the user interface of uh, Google Optimize. This is the interface of a container. Google Optimize structure and hierarchy is account that corresponds to a company, container uh, that is similar to Tag Manager and corresponds to one website, and within containers, there are multiple experiments. As you can see, Google Analytics integration is literally two clicks away, I just need to choose the property and the views that I will be using. Let's go in and create an experience. When creating an experience, there are two very important things. First and the foremost, you have to have a website, which I hope that by now you've realized that you would have to have. And you need to give a name to your experiment. 
let's do optimize live stream experience. And as you can see, it asks me to uh, add uh, a URL, which is the URL of the editor page. So this is where we'll be doing edits. Google Optimize offers a few types of tests. Uh, first one is A-B test, which is using Google Optimize Visual Editor to do edits. This one is the easiest one to get started with. When you move on the maturity curve uh, of A-B testing and conversion optimization, you will probably want to do multivariate test, which is testing one uh, or two or three or multiple changes in combinations one with each other. Redirect tests are essentially A-B tests, but if you want to do a substantial change, meaning a redesign, a complete redesign of a one feature or one landing page, you will probably want to code that out yourself and just do a redirect test. And last but not the least, and a little bit separate from other types is personalization, which is um, not experimentation per se, but it's offered to tailor specific landing pages and specific messages to your uh, segmented audiences and types of users. So let's just create a simple A-B test. And this will launch the experiment builder. The experiment builder will tell me what I need to do. So I need to target my experience, exper uh, target my experiment, meaning that I need to determine who will see the experiment, when they will see the experiment, and how much traffic do I want in that experiment. I need to create variants. That means that I need to alter uh, at least one of the elements of my website. Link to analytics is already done. Set up what I will measure, and we're ready to start. Some of the stuff that I've just mentioned is very automated in Google Optimize. For example, if I click variant, add variant, that will automatically create an initial setup for an experiment. So I can see that the percentage of traffic going into my original and variant is already split 50-50. You can do custom if you wish. I would recommend that you leave it 50-50 to get started. I have already uh, original pre-set up. I have some tar basic targeting already pre-set up based on the URL that I've put in. And I'm ready to start editing my website. By clicking Edit, Google Optimize Editor will launch, and it will show your website, but in a slightly different way than a browser would show. So you will notice as I hover over the elements in this website that now I can see the HTML elements and parts of the website exposed to this editor. Optimize works in such a way that you can do edits on any element of the website it will get comprised into uh, changes, and when Optimize fires, those instructions will be sent in document object model when constructing your website. Just to demonstrate you a few simple things, Optimize is super easy for people who don't have technical skills. I can easily drag my images, resize them, I can easily change text on the website. So I can either right click, ooh, I did something wrong. I can either click remove element. I can bring back the removed element. So I can just delete the change. It's simple as working with docs. OK, let's just change the text of this element. Instead of send flowers, I will assume that a messaging more emotional will encourage people to convert more. I will type out show people you love that you care. And that's it. Our text is done. I can do more advanced changes if I'm more technically 
uh, capable. I can go into edit HTML and I can see here expose the HTML code of this element. Note that you can do this for every element on this website. If I, I feel more creative, I can actually run JavaScript on this. I can append scripts to run on my element. However, I notice now that by changing this text, this button got pushed down. So what I can do is I can change simply the text size as you would do in any text editor. Let's just change it to 60. And now my website looks OK right now. You can see all of the changes that you've done in your change log. You can use a responsive editor, or you can simulate any devices that you might be worried about. And once you're happy with the changes you've done for your first variant, you can click Save and continue editing your experiment. Once our edits are done, Optimize will show us what to do next. So we need to, we need to set up some targeting. Very basic targeting is the URL targeting that will say, when will your experiment fire? So experiment will fire when this URL is triggered. However, imagine if you are an e-commerce site and you want to do a discount on 50,000 products. You don't have to edit 50,000 pages, or you have, don't have to do manual changes. You can do simple URL or complex URL regexs or contains something like slash product. And then your change will be applied to the same element on every product page. I will leave my simple targeting. Very powerful integration with Google Analytics means that we have powerful targeting capabilities. You will see some very familiar things from analytics here, such as behavior, which is page referrer, or new users, returning users. You can use geo to uh, target specific city, country, region, or county. You can use technology such as browser, operating system, or mobile device info, so you can target very specific devices. Let's say I want to target only mobile devices. I simply add mobile, and this is my targeting done. There are some more advanced targeting rules, such as query parameter, data layer variables, JavaScript variables, cookies, or scripts that you can utilize if you have a developer in company. For example, one good example of a JavaScript variable is a company that has a chat service that works only nine to five. What they did is they had a simple JavaScript variable that reads the time of the day and will fire experiment only if the value of that variable is between nine in the morning and 5 p.m. So you can get pretty creative with all of these options. Link to analytics is a click away. You need to select a view and that's it. The last thing you have to do is decide the metric you want to experiment on. So for example, you want to experiment on the button clicks or goals or conversions on transactions. You can choose from the list of predefined ones that also come from Google Analytics. Or you can create your own custom objective, like combination of events or number of page views seen, etc. For this example, I will just use a predefined page views one. And easily enough, that is all that we need to do for setting up an experiment. Optimize checks all of the boxes now, and our experiment is ready to start. If you haven't yet, please watch the pre-recorded videos, 
as in the pre-recorded videos, we go through all of these sections of the editor and how to set up an experiment. I will now share some success stories with you. So working with Google Optimize gave me the opportunity to work with some of the clients uh, that are mature or less mature in the A-B testing world. Our first case study is Sigma Sport case study, which is showcasing uh, using Google audiences to create a lifetime value customers and drive more revenue. So what did Sigma Sport do? They are a bicycle uh, commerce business. They work both offline and online. And they've seen that people do not interact very well with uh, the carousel on the homepage after they returned on the website. They thought of a nice experiment, which would be if a person bought a bicycle with brand A, let's showcase brand A accessorize is in that carousel. And that's exactly what they did. They targeted people who already made a purchase of a brand, created an audience of it in Google Analytics, shared it with Google Optimize. And the result of the experiment was that the carousel clicks increased by 7%. But what's more important, 28% rise in the revenue was happening for their business. Our next case study is a bit different. This is a brand that does cosmetics. Uh, cosmetics. Rituals is a very famous um, EMEA cosmetic brand, and they have a lot of coupons, promotions, campaigns simultaneously. What they wanted to do is personalize each customer's journey based on uh, the segment of the customers and the promotion they were exposed to. Using Google Optimize enabled them to very quickly deploy more than 50 custom product promotions on their site. Next case study is a very cool one, and it's a mobile one. It is about Mango, who is a Spanish cloth clothing uh, retailer. And they have noticed that their mobile traffic is growing rapidly. So it was 50% year on year. However, their, their conversion rate is not following. So they were wondering what is happening and why is, their why is their traffic focused on mobile? However, conversions happen on desktop. They've analyzed their mobile traffic using Google Analytics. And they've seen that people drop off on add to cart and checkout. So they have decided to do two very simple things. They've added a new button called favorite, and they have changed add to cart from just a simple arrow that will indicate next stage to literally text add to cart. These simple changes resulted in 4.5% uplift in mobile conversion rate meaning that people converted on mobile devices and 3.9 percentage rise in the mobile revenue generated from these two experiments. These are impressive results for a mobile conversion rate uplift by just simply changing a button or an icon to a text. Our last case study is a case study by Spotify, which I think uh, all of you probably know really well. So Spotify utilized Google Optimize integration with Google Ads. So uh, they wanted to serve a specific landing page for users who search for audiobooks. I was surprised to learn uh, that audiobooks in Germany are super popular. Um, in on Spotify, and they are sometimes even more popular than the generic music streaming service. What they did is they created a Google Ads search campaign that will show a Spotify ad when somebody looks for audiobooks, and they've decided to tailor the messaging for the for people coming into that campaign. 
by creating a separate landing page that was localized, they managed to increase the premium subscriptions by 24%. And they're now expanding this A-B test globally and running multiple, I would say, tens of experiments weekly. So if you think that you can have a success story with Optimize, feel free to go to optimize.google.com and open a free account and start experimenting. It will take you just 15 minutes, as I've just shown you. I'll hand you back to Anna. And thank you for your attention. Awesome. Thanks so much, Maya. And I think it was really, really great to see the live demo on how to set up the test and optimize and how really easy it's to integrate that with Google Analytics and all the other tools. And also the success stories have been super, super inspiring. On this note, I am uh, moving on to the Q&A. Thanks everyone who writes their questions in the chat. I'm going to give our speakers a few minutes just to read them up since I collected them. But let's start first from the pre-submitted questions, questions that we've also been collecting throughout all the previous live streams, right? Um, so the first one that we want to address, I think it was submitted like on the previous live stream, but we felt that it's kind of more relevant to live stream on A-B testing. So what is the best way to orchestrate a B tests and is that with the roadmap or is there any other way? So if any of the speakers has anything on I do have a few thoughts on this. Um, but if Lena, I think you wanted to start on that one. Yeah, so just one thing. Um yes, roadmap is super good, definitely. Um that's awesome. The only thing that I want you to to bring with you is um don't just test aesthetics. Um, aesthetics is, is great. It can definitely increase your conversion rate, but most of the time that is not where you have the friction points. And if it, if you find the friction for points and solve those, that's where you get the great uplifts. So use your research that we've gone through. Use your usability test and the quantitative analysis, and also check the best uh, practices that we've uh, gone through throughout this course and take that with you into the evaluation of what you should start testing. Because it's so easy that we start testing um, design and stuff that we are uh, discussing within the internal teams, but we need to focus on the user. What is the biggest problems for the user and how can we solve those? So just bring that with you before you create your roadmap. After you have that, after, you, after you've um, done a pre prioritization, which you can read about in the CRO course, um, when you've prior prioritized and seen whether you have the biggest uh, opportunities, then you create a roadmap. Hope that makes sense. Makes total sense. Thank you, Lena. Uh, I would like to add myself that maybe just from the stakeholders and from the organizational point of view, like how things should be happening, how this communication of the tests we are running should be happening. So I, I, I do think that in the beginning of this process, there should be like a strategy, right? And that should be like a business strategy, a long-term goal that your company, the business is trying to achieve. Let's say, for example, you are a fashion retailer that um, uh, you know that by the, by the end of the year, you will not only sell clothes, right? You will become like a multi-product retailer and you have this strategy a business strategy in mind and you do understand where your product needs to be by the end of the year and that's how you build the long-term um, roadmap like the list of tests and you try to bucket them around well first of all we would need to change uh, the value proposition and the way we display things on the home page then we will probably for the product detail page we will first play around with the way we display price the way we display different options and filters so you kind of have this big picture in mind and you're trying to uh, for every single page for every single feature um, 
build the A-B testing uh, list list of things. And the funny thing is that you can definitely, you know, build the roadmap for the entire year. However, you, you things are going to come in, right? Uh, you will, for example, do a UX audit with an external agency or somebody is going to come in with new ideas, as Lena have just said. So the ideas are going to come in. It's really crucial to keep this roadmap flexible as well and to have the process in place how you change the prioritization in that roadmap. Uh, so maybe to kind of do a detailed roadmap for not longer than a quarter and again allow this kind of flexibility to happen within that process so uh, that's kind of the stakeholder piece of, of, of this question uh, so now moving on to the next one and it's also kind of a stakeholder question so i would like to know more on how to make the case for a b testing to be a regular occurrence for executive buy-in as currently in my company there is no process in place and uh, we are unsure what's the best approach to start so we felt it's a really great question and we did address a lot of these things in previous live streams on the maturity of your organization but let's also have a look um, at this from the a b testing perspective so i'll let lena chime in yeah so what i usually do is i <laughs> start with performing three tests and for that i don't really need that much c-level um, or executive buy-in so three simple tests and from that i can usually get some kind of uplift and a percentage of what those tests give gave from that i calculate the revenue that those tests will give throughout a year so say that the uplift was five percent uh, then I can show them that. So this is how much money you're going to earn in a year thanks to these tests. And I need your buy-in to be able to produce even more results. Because when we're talking to executives, it all comes down to revenue. So you need something that will give you a number that you can show them of what they will gain. And uh, once you have that, it's usually so much easier to to. Um, explain why there's also perhaps some costs in having a developer working with you, for instance, uh, and that will be much easier once you have the revenue number. Great. Uh, thanks, Lena. Maya, do you have any anything to add on this one, on the buy-in, like how do companies usually approach that? I will just say plus one on Lena uh, by being very biased towards Google Optimize, not because I work on that product, it's because it's the best. Um, it's I would recommend you start with Optimize because you don't need developer resources. Uh, you can make a very easy and small change and start building the, increment, uh, the incremental value. So once you have first three tests up and running some results you will be you will have some data points to present to your management and you can start building um even a small percentage of somebody's time cross-functional team that will kind of give its input and start working uh on the the full conversion optimization and a b testing uh, track thank you maya um, at this point, we, we would like to switch to questions coming through the live chat. And thanks so much for your awesome questions and also for uh, that you started answering them yourself. Uh, we see this as really, really great traction in the chat. Uh, so one of the questions um, uh, came from Kelsey. Um, so when designing, we need to know uh, we know that we need to focus on mobile, but we do need to look at the landscape, at landscape mobile view as well. So basically, Kelsey says, my A-B tests are focused on portrait view. Is that the correct approach? We've actually, we discussed this with uh, this question with speakers before the live streams, because it was also similar question was submitted um, in through the forum. So if anybody has a response to that one. I will just say that if your website is responsive and it adapts to all mobile resolutions, it doesn't matter if it's landscape or portrait. Um, so just feel free to design it, but have responsive in mind. 
completely agree. Um, nothing. We don't really need to go that detailed as a uh, portrait or uh, landscape. The only thing definitely go into, since this, since we have the power of being able to go into Google Analytics and check on the results, always check the results on desktop and mobile because that can be a huge difference. So if you do not target your test um, towards one of those devices, but run the same test on both devices, definitely always go into Google, Google Analytics and check the results there. Great. Um, thanks, everyone. Now, a few more questions from the live chat, um, and then we will see if you have more. So Damien is asking, we are facing an issue which is related to the fact that we are using a single page application, and Google Optimize doesn't really understand the user is changing URL. We want to use the URL targeting option to manage the redirect to our test. So I guess this is a question on Google Optimize, and Maya, yes. you're on the yeah. This is a very common question, and it's a very good question, so thank you for asking it. Single page apps or any, um, I would say, dynamic uh, websites are uh, usually considered as um, a no-no in testing, such as like with the visual editors, uh, just for the sheer fact that the page is not static and that the element might not yet be constructed when you open the, uh, when you open the editor. However, Optimize has a way on how to do that. Um, firstly, you will need some coding experience uh, as you will need to target the change to the element that is not yet existing. So you will need to know the element selector that you are want, uh, that you want to change. And do doesn't matter if it still doesn't uh, exist, you will just take the element selector do the change in the coding editor and save it in the experiment. Second thing, Optimize by default uh, launches and starts evaluating uh, the targeting criteria, traffic allocation, um, the URLs and so on, on the page load. However, for single page applications, mentioned as mentioned before, on page load, not all elements are constructed yet. So there is a feature called custom uh, activation events that can delay or trigger uh, optimize on whenever you need it on the custom um, criteria. So not to go into too much details, feel free to go to Optimize Help Center. It's very uh, detailed and uh, it has a lot of examples on how to implement optimize on single page apps. Um, and how to use custom activation events to uh, just run tests on a dynamic content. So I'd just like to add one thing here. Great answer. Uh, thank you, Maya. Uh, one thing that I like about this question is that it's apparent that the person has done a QA, quality assurance. That's something you always need to do. So you always need to check if the test is running well on different devices, uh, you can do this in several ways. So like Google around and um, try out uh, different ways to create your process for quality assurance uh, when it comes to your tests. It could be that you have a tag. Uh, so you run the test for only one tag or only one cookie. And that way you can only you can check that it's uh, looking well when it's going live. And then you know it's working and then you shoot it out to everyone. Uh, I mean, tricks like that is super good for checking that the test is running well. And yeah, great question. It's it's um, it's noticeable that you're doing this. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just add on top of that. Uh, there is a preview option for in Optimize where you, uh, Optimize will generate you a link that will respect all of the targeting rules, but it will not be live. So just hit preview, and you will get the link to be shared with your stakeholders and. Yes, plus 100, always QA your experiments. Awesome. Thanks so much. So one of the pre-submitted questions that we felt we have to take in this live stream, which is really, really good, was around uh, the low the, the websites with the low traffic. So what methods to use to create UX for a website from scratch when A-B testing is impossible due to a low number of visitors? 
And the reason why we decided to take this question in the live stream on A-B testing and not in the first live stream is because this is actually what Google Optimize helps you with, right? You can actually A-B test with Google Optimize even if you have a low traffic on your website. So Maya, can you please tell us how is this possible? <laughs> Yes, that is a really good question. And uh, different A-B testing tools uh, offer different statistical methodologies behind them. Uh, some of them use frequency statistics. Some of them use Bayesian. They all have different models. So does Google Optimize. One important thing about Google Optimize is that it doesn't have a requirement of the number of conversions or the number of traffic that needs to flow onto, into the site for the results to be statistically significant as we don't use statistical significance at all. So that might sound scary, but we have something that is different that corresponds to uh, Bayesian stats. It's called probabilities. Um, however, what Optimize is looking for is looking for conversion consistency. So let's say uh, you launch an experiment and just for the sheer fact that the experience is new for the users, the conversion rate can go sky high. And that's what Optimize does not want to have a false positives on. So uh, it monitors, a, as a rule of a thumb, uh, two weeks to kind of count for seasonalities and some anomalies for uh, experiment being, uh, being live. And it will look for consistency. Consistency means that the conversion rate is stable enough and not volatile that it can declare and predict what the future conversion rate will be. I will tell you my personal example. I had uh, an experiment declaring a winner on my test website that I forgot about. It had 15 sessions, but it was consistent enough. So I got a really good result and it was actually a true result. Um, thanks so much, Maya. Now we're mo moving on to a few more questions coming actively through the live chat. So a few, again, very technical questions and related to the tool. So does anti-flicker snippet work well with optimized snippet installed by GTM? That's Bar Best is asking us. I will say short and sweet, yes. Um, installation, anti-flicker, uh, different types of installations, either hard coding, GTM, or other tag management systems are super well documented in our help center. Um, so feel free to head over there. Um, and yes, anti-flicker works with um, optimized deploy through GTM. There are nuances on which tag you have to put or container ID, but it's all well documented on the help center. Um, OK. so not to go really far from this and again another question from the chat that people have already addressed but just to double check with our experts can we use different page url for variant targeting and variants for a b testing also from question from bar best so if i understood correctly um this question is around can i use a different url for editing and different for targeting yes uh you don't have to have the same url uh, but the only thing that you have to have in mind that the, the, the URL that you're targeting has to have the same elements that you've edited. Otherwise, it will edit a random thing on, on the website. So for example, if you are targeting all product pages, as mentioned, you can just edit one. Or if you have a header on top of all of the specific category pages or specific brand pages, you can edit just one take it as an editor URL, and then deploy to all of those URLs. Um, great. Thanks so much, Maya. And now we're going back to the pre-submitted questions. And one of them was, how long do we need to run a test to know that the results are substantial? And there are multiple um, ways to answer this question depending on the tool. So let's maybe start with Google Optimize answer. So Google Optimize will automatically declare a test when the results are substantial. 
that is the shortest answer. Uh, we do require two weeks worth of data to, as mentioned, uh, account for seasonality, such as weekdays or weekends. Um, and to just kind of count in the fact that the experience is new and the users might react differently. However, you can stop the experiment before two weeks, uh, but it will not stop automatically. So um, it all optimized does it all for you in the background. Um, I would say wait until it stops. The maximum duration is 90 days. Uh, so in the 90, day, 90 days, there will be either a clear leader, winner, or the results will be inconclusive. Yeah, absolutely. And in general, for A-B testing, I don't know, Lina, if you have any takes on that. For You had experience of testing in different tools before you joined Google. Yeah, so, so there is another way of doing this. And um, a lot of the companies are pretty much uh, balancing these two two ways. So there's the automatic way where Google Optimize takes care of everything. And you can always go in and check the statistical significance. Now there's a huge debate on this. Uh, the zero community is divided in, in different groups uh, when it comes to opinions about statistical significance. Uh, I also believe in the Bayesian uh, met method, which we are doing within uh, Google Optimize. But if you want to check statistical significance, just Google um, check st statistical st significance. There will be a lot of different tools. You will just enter the amount of visitors and um, the amount of conversions, and that will show you a number. Um, I think it's always good to have a debate around this. Um, test it out see what kind of numbers you get from that. But um, what Maya is saying about two weeks, very important, do not go below that. And if also, you need to have some kind of guidelines so you don't get too little data. Um, for instance, in the Nordics, we don't have get as much traffic as we do in, in the US, for instance. So we have a a kind of rule of thumb within a lot of the CRO companies where we say that uh, not below 200 conversions for each variant. That's one way of making sure that you at least have enough conversions to get some kind of uh, significant um, uh, results. So uh, play around with the different ways, but what you're choosing between is the automatic way. Always check that, that is the most important way. If you want to back up your findings, then you can always uh, Google check statistical significance and do not go below two weeks and uh, under 200 conversions. That's my like general, general guidelines. Yeah, and actually one of the questions uh, that we had submitted uh, in the forum uh, before the live stream was really about that. So why do we need to wait uh, for 14 days to end the test, avoid seasonality, weekends, if the A-B test is done comparing each alternative simultaneously, each one with a segment of the traffic. So the advantage of this test is that it doesn't need to compare with all the data, right? So yeah, a few comments on that, really same comments from speakers. No, but exactly. It, it, uh, I mean, if you have a huge uh, global website where you get a, just an enormous amount of traffic, uh, yes, there are some companies that go below this two-week week guideline. But as Maya was saying, you need to make sure that you have all weekdays. You need to make sure that you have the weekends. Um, traffic can definitely uh, change their behavior on a Monday compared to a, a Sunday morning. So you need to check that your results uh, work on each day. Yeah, and sometimes also what can happen, can, there can be different, I don't know, marketing campaigns being launched or any technical troubles that are happening on the website and your conversion rate may go up or down, you know, and you may not be aware of, about these factors as a product owner, right? Because that's, for example, a marketing department that launched the campaign, uh, or there is a, that was like 
technical department, the backend engineers that are aware of these issues. But you do have these fluctuations in the data and you need to really understand how it's performing over time. And that's also some of the mistakes that few companies do. They want, again, to prove their variant, the variant wins, the new idea wins. They launch the test, they see positive spike and they stop the test, right? Uh, that's ab absolutely not the way to do that. You need to wait and you need to see the performance all the time. Uh, and that's how you will be, again, absolutely sure it, it's it's really a better uh, variant. And again, as Lina said, always do the quality checks, like for example, running AA test in the background uh, or any other ways you can check that exactly the execution of the test is implemented correctly. So that, 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 that it's not the hypothesis, all right, which was, um, I don't know, wrong, or it's it's not the hypothesis, it's the execution of the test that, that which led it to be to, to get failed. Um, great. So now we are moving back to the chat, which is very active today. So when it comes to insights, um, how far GA is good and uh, simple comparing with other tools like Mixpanel, Facebook Analytics and Firebase, Suresh asks us about that. And again, it's kind of a question about measurement, but we decided to take it today as well. Maya? So I will, I will say um, depends on what you're looking for. Uh, Google Analytics can be a beast, but it can tell you very important and very um, uh, accurate insights. Uh, when it comes to optimize, uh, Google Optimize and experimentation with Optimize, you would have to have Google Analytics. Um, but I would highly recommend you, if you're having a website, to use Google Analytics. Facebook Insights tell you a bit different story. Uh, mix panel also. So um, I would highly recommend you to use Google Analytics. Great. Are there any more questions in the live chat? I can see Kelsey is asking about, how, again, the stakeholders question about how to convince them, but it's kind of not related to A-B testing and optimize. We can maybe speak about that one later. Um, but if anybody has any last minute questions on Google Optimize, if not, then I think on this note, we are moving just to announce the, our next live stream, which will take next Tuesday, same time, 1 p.m. EMEA time, GMT. And we're going to talk about very exciting topic about how you can improve UX using progressive web technologies. And that's going to cover accelerated mobile pages, progressive web apps, Google Pay, Google Sign-in. So all these amazing APIs and technologies that you can implement to um, increase the capabilities um, of your website and take the, to follow inspiration from the native apps and see how you can have this experience on the mobile web. And yeah, unfortunately, the last it's going to be our last session of the Mobile UX Marathon. We're going to um, discuss a few of the, I don't know, the, some stats, uh, how many people listen to us, so what was the most exciting topic, things like that. And again, please do submit the feedback forms throughout the entire marathon, watch all the previous live streams, let us know. I will be preparing that, that report for the next session. And we did receive a lot of questions on how can I grow as a UX designer? How can I develop my UX skills? And we wanted to keep it to the last, very last live stream, and we will be addressing it there. Make sure you dial in. We will have you experts there addressing that question. And we will share that as a part of this answer to this question, we'll share a few resources, really nice blogs that you can follow on that. And again, you can find a lot of links to different resources on the Mobile VX Marathon website, including Lina's uh, CRO course, How to Win on Mobile, and many, and Google Optimize Help Center as well, <laughs> and many other amazing places where you can go and learn about mobile excellence. On this note, I would like to thank our speakers. Thanks everyone who joined us today in the live chat. Thank for your amazing questions. So thank
thank you so much, Lina, for joining us from Stockholm. Thank you. Thank you to all the, the viewers. Great questions. I yeah. really love the discussion. Yeah. Thanks so much, Maya. Uh, Thank you for having me. Yes, and plus one on Lena's comment. I love the activity. I love the comments, and the questions are really, really good. On this note, thanks so much, and I'll see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>